is what we're going to be making today. So we're going to have a go at making these fantastic sloth crafts that you can see in front of me. So we've got a little sloth in a little leaf sleeping bag here. And we have got something that look, might look a little bit familiar because it's got some of the elements from the picture that we did on the last video. But you'll be able to see that there's a little bit of a difference here because in the center we have got a mummy sloth and her little baby sloth, which are very cute. Now, I have created a little template to help you to make this sloth in the center. So if you are a little bit younger and you found my previous video a little bit challenging, then this one might be the video for you because you can print this off from my website and I've put the link in the description bar and your grown up might be able to help you to print that out and I'll tell you how to do that on the video as we go through. So if you want to, you can print it out. If you want to have a go at just drawing it in your in key stage two, then you can, or you can use the template. And if you just fancy making this little guy at the side here, then you can skip along the video towards the end and I'll show you how to make him. There's also a little template for him as well. So if you want to have a go, then that might be really nice. What I'm going to do is I'm going to carry on with the video and I'm going to show you exactly how I created both of them and you can choose however you would like to follow along. Either doing the big picture in the centre if you fancy it or just skipping to the end and having a go with the little cute sloth who's a little bit cartoon-like and he's in a little leaf sleeping bag. So your choice depending on what you want to do. And then our next video will be... Um, something that both age groups can have a go at, I think. Okay, brilliant. Let's move on. Welcome back to Art4. And I hope that you have had a little go at the previous sloth video that I posted a little while ago. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to do some sloth paper crafts. And we're actually going to make two different sloth crafts today. So hopefully you'll be able to join in with everything that I'm doing and you'll be able to make yourself some fantastic pieces of artwork while you're at home. Okay, so what we've got is I've got all the things that we're going to use in our craft projects today. So you're going to need all of these things if you can get them. Okay, so I've got a Pritt stick. You don't have to have a Pritt stick. You could just have some normal glue. If you've got the runny glue, the PVA glue, you can also use that as well. Because some mums and dads have that in the house. But if you haven't and you've got a Pritt stick, that's fine as well. Okay, I've got a black pen, a black felt tip pen, or a black Sharpie. And you can use either of those. We're not going to use those too much today, just a little bit. But you've got to have them as well. Um, a pencil, because we're going to do some drawing as well. A rubber in case we make some mistakes. We've got a pair of scissors. Now, hopefully you've got some that look a little bit like mine with a rounded tip that are nice and safe for you to use. And if you haven't got a pair of rounded edged scissors, then maybe you might ask a grown-up to help you a little bit with the cutting out later if you need them to. And on this side, I've got all the pencil crayons that we're going to use today. So I've got a brown because we're doing sloths and sloths are generally a nice brown colour. I've got some light green and some dark greens here and they're going to be for our leaves because we're going to do a background for our sloth craft today. Uh, I've got a light blue and a dark blue too. And then I've got some nice vibrant shades here in case you want to add some extra details to your sloth craft later. So those are all the actual things that you're going to need for this. And then the main thing to help you with this craft today is you are going to need a copy of this template. Now, you might have to ask mum and dad to help you to print this out, but you need this before we're going to start today because this will help us with our fantastic sloth craft. And we're going to do a mummy and baby sloth craft. And then we're going to do a little sleeping sloth craft too. So you can go to my website and print this out and the link is at the bottom in the description bar for those people who are listening along with you. Okay, so they should be able to help you with that. So once you've got that, then you are basically ready to start. Once you've got all your materials, we're ready to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my template to one side and we'll come back to that in a minute and then I can clear all of my things underneath and we can get started. So I'm going to put that out of the way. I'm going to move all of my pencil crayons across and I'm going to move my scissors, my rubber and all of the things that we're going to need later on. So I'm just going to put those to one side. Okay, so 
once you have got your sloth template that's going to help you today the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to use our scissors and we're going to cut along this line here and I've split them into two because obviously we're doing two crafts today so just be careful as you're cutting and you're just going to cut straight along those little dots there and don't worry about it being totally neat because this is just a template to help us isn't it so I'm going to put this one to one side because we're going to use that hopefully at the end because this one's quite a quick one but I thought you might enjoy doing it okay so we'll pop that away for now so you're left with the mummy and the baby sloth template and what we're going to do today is we're going to use it a little bit like a collage so we're going to use the paper template to help us so we get our shapes correct and then you're going to be able to do your own background and come up with nice uh, things to put in there so it'll look really like a rainforest so my first job is to color in the sloth and we're not going to cut out first we're going to cut out second and that means that we don't have to be terribly neat when we're colouring in and we are not at risk of ripping a leg off here or there okay so I've got my brown um, colouring pencil and if you have got two that would be fantastic if you haven't don't worry because I've just got one myself so we're going to start with the legs and we're going to press nice and hard and we're going to go all the way down the outside of our sloth leg and you can see I've gone a little bit outside the lines but that's okay because we're going to cut out our sloth at the end of doing our coloring so press quite hard all the way along like that okay and so you've got the outside edge of your sloth leg and then using the same pencil or if you've got a separate shade you could use a separate shade at this point you're going to press a little bit lighter and you're just going to fill in all of those gaps and remember how we like to make sure that there aren't any white bits when we're doing our coloring so you've got to try really hard to make sure that all of the area is full okay so that's our first leg done brilliant job so let's move on to the second one and we're going to do exactly the same again so we're going to shade all the way down the outside and that gives a nice outline to our sloth and then we're going to come across the top and down the other side and I'm pressing quite hard you can probably hear that okay and I'm not leaving any white bits and then I'm going to go light press lightly in the middle and I'm just going to shade all the way down like that and you can see that we're already creating a really nice fluffy 3d effect on our sloth and make sure you don't forget to color his or her sorry two paws at the top because they're going to need to be colored as well and then we're going to do the exact same thing with this big area here which is her body so we're going to do the same we're going to just go all the way around the outside and we're going to think about pressing nice and hard and trying to fill the whole space so we don't want to have any white bits if we can possibly help it today so we're going to go all the way along her tummy just like I'm doing here and we're going to come all the way down this edge here and again it doesn't matter if you go outside the lines I don't mind that because we're going to cut it out shortly so we're just going to keep going all the way around and this actually doesn't take too long I'm going quite quick and I think you're quite good at coloring so you should be able to have a good go at this and we're going to go all the way till we reach the back leg here okay fantastic so then we're going to do exactly what we did with the legs we're going to do the same thing so we're just going to use our pencil a little bit lighter and we're going to just color the rest of her body in and sloths are really furry so that's why we're using these shading techniques to try and make sure that our sloth looks like her fur is kind of fluffy that's what we want her to look like so we're going all the way along nice and light and we're thinking very carefully about our textures and our patterns that we're making with our pencil okay and you can see that I'm done there and you can see there's already a little bit of texture here where I've overlapped with the pencil which is really good and we don't need to worry about that so what we're going to do now is we're going to add some extra bits where I press a little bit harder 
So I'm just going to put them in just occasionally across her body. And I'm going to think about using different kinds of lines. So this one looks a little bit like I've drawn the hairs on, like that. Or you can just do a little scribble here and there. And that will give us the kind of tufty look of her fur, which is exactly what we're after. Okay, so I'm just going to put in a few of those like that. There we go. And I think that she is looking very fluffy so far. Yeah. So once we've got our body done like that, we're going to do the same with the legs down here. And again, it doesn't matter if you go outside the lines, but what we're going to try and be aware of is we don't want to colour her little claws, her little toes, because we're doing a three-toed sloth. And we don't want these to be brown. So that's the only bit you need to be really careful with. So I'm just going to colour just gently around the outside of that bit there. And then I'm going to do exactly what I did before, where I'm going to colour the outside of it first. And you can see I'm kind of scribbling a little bit. I'm not worrying about being too neat and I'm not worrying that I've got a little bit of brown there because at the end of the video we're going to cut it out. So I'm going to be very careful going in the claws and then just lightly just shade all of the middle section. Okay, and you can see we've again got that kind of fluffy 3D effect that we had on the body. And we're going to repeat that on the other leg because obviously sloths have four legs, don't they? So we need to make sure we've got all our legs coloured and that they're all going to tie in together when we put this join it up at the end. Okay, so the same thing, a little bit of dark around the edge. And if you've got two shades of brown, you can do the darker brown on the outside and then you can do the lighter brown on the inside and that will look really effective. But as you can see, I'm just doing it with one, so it doesn't need to be too brilliant. Okay, so all of our legs are done and you can see that I've not left any white bits. Okay, and that's really important. We wanna try really hard with that today. Okay, so our body and our legs are done. Brilliant job. So we're going to move on to the mummy sloths face now and I've drawn you a little template just to help you okay so that we can get our patterns correct and these lovely sloths have fantastic eye patches and they're like a darker brown and so we're going to do those first so we're just going to colour and we're going to be quite careful not to go into her eye we're going to just go around the outside and so we're being a little bit neater here so you might want to just take your time to do these little sections because they're a little bit fiddlier than the body and the legs okay and then we're going to do the same color around this outside area here because that is also her fur so we're gonna just shade all of those and again with this little bit we need to be a bit more careful so we're going to try really hard to stay in between these two lines okay so we're just going to work all the way around until we've filled all of that section. Okay, and you can just see I'm just going over it just to make sure that it's lovely and dark. Now, at this point, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to colour the baby the same. Okay, because I've got my brown pencil and that's probably the easiest thing to do. And then we can come back in with our black and we can do the eyes and the noses at the end. Okay, so I'm going to keep with my brown pencil and if you want to, you can turn your template around so it's easier maybe for you to colour your baby sloth that way or you can just leave it the way that I've got it. It doesn't matter to me. I'm probably going to turn it that way so you can see. Okay, so same exact thing. We're going to be very careful around the eyes and we're going to do those dark brown again. So I'm just pressing quite hard but I'm being careful. And I'm thinking all the time about where I'm colouring. And then the exact same that we did with the mum, we're going to do with the baby. And again, I'm just going to be really neat. Okay, so the body and the legs, we didn't have to be neat. But with the heads and the little baby one, we do need to think quite carefully about where we're colouring and we're going to colour down these outside parts and we're going to leave the middle part which is his tummy 
we're going to leave that for now okay and then what we're going to do is we're going to go in with a little bit of light just in that middle section there okay so i'm not pressing very heavily so if you've got two shades can you see how that would work really well now if you want to you can color in the sloth face so you could color it in really really lightly okay with brown if you want to but you don't have to okay i might but you don't have to you could leave him white and you could do the same with the mum as well okay so that's how it would look if you had two shades of brown so if you've got a light one and a dark one you can kind of create that effect so i'm going to turn my template around now and i'm going to put my brown pencil to one side because we're done with that now so the next thing that we're going to use is a black felt tip or a black sharpie now obviously when we're using sharpie it's a permanent marker and so we need to be really careful that we don't get it on our clothes because it won't come off and that we don't get it on the table or whatever surface we're using to work on so you can see here that underneath my template i've just got some printer paper so maybe if you've got a couple of sheets of that so that you can draw on your template without it going through onto the table and making a mark because it's really difficult to get off okay so once you've checked that you've got something to rest on then you can come back in and we can do the eyes and the nose and the noses are really easy we're just going to color them straight away in black like that and then with our eyes we're going to put a little circle inside each one okay and with the baby we might have that a little bit tricky so i'll show you how to do that in a minute with the mum we're then going to fill in that little extra bit okay so hopefully you've got a little bit of light in her eyes and that kind of makes her look like she's alive like she's got a little twinkle in her eye and it's the reflection of the light as well and that's what artists use to make the things look realistic so with the baby sloth you might just want to go really carefully and see if you can get a little bit of white in there if you can't it doesn't matter but you can try okay so either way it looks fine so what we've got is our completed coloring there so we're not needing to do anything more with that section okay we've done it and they look very cute they look a bit peculiar at the moment because they're not put together but i'm going to show you how to put her together and the little baby as well in a minute so what you're going to need to grab next is you're going to need to grab your scissors and like i said before hopefully you've got some nice rounded scissors that you're comfortable using and if not this might be the part of the video where you might ask your grown-up just to give you a little bit of a hand okay and that's fine if you want to do that so what we're going to do is I'm just going to turn mine around a little and I'm going to cut carefully around the edge of my sloth shapes okay so I'm going to go really nice and close to that black line and you can see that as I'm going I'm actually turning the paper rather than the scissors okay and I'm going nice and close all the way around and if you've colored outside the lines at this point it won't matter because we've cut it out and I'm going to do the baby sloth next so I'm going to cut this out all the way around and if your grown-ups helping you that's fantastic you can think about what you might like to add to your background so you might be thinking about the kind of leaves you might like the kind of flowers you might like or that kind of thing that you might want to put in your rainforest background so that's our little baby done and I'm just going to put my pieces of paper to one side and then I'm just going to cut that section off and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut all the way along like that so it makes it easier for me to cut out the little sloth arms so I'm going really close to the edge and you try and get as close as you can but like I said, because if you've gone out of the lines, it doesn't really matter how close you get to the edge because you're not going to be left with any white bits. OK, so there's one leg and then there's the next leg. There we go. And we're going to go all the way around and just cut carefully. Keep your fingers out of the way. We don't want you getting snipped by the scissors. So just take your time. 
you're not in any rush with this i'd rather you did it safely than rushed to follow me at the exact same time because you can just pause the video if you need to and the last section that we're going to cut out is the biggest section it's the mummy's body so i'm just going to go really carefully and i hope that these shapes are well they should be fairly straightforward for you to cut out they're not too tricky so just go carefully but if you need a little bit of help you could ask somebody who's in your house with you to give you a little hand okay or maybe a grown-up who's helping you so we're going to go all the way around the outside of the body and that's our template done so i'm just going to move all of the little pieces out of the way so that they don't get involved in our next part so we have got the body we've got the two legs hopefully you haven't dropped them on the floor because they do sometimes tend to go missing we've got the mummy sloths head and we've got the little baby sloth as well okay so we're going to put this together now we're not going to glue it onto the paper though okay and we're just going to put the mum sloth together and we're going to put the baby in position and then we're going to use the completed model to help us to work out where to do our background because we need to work out how big it's going to be and what we need to put in okay so you're going to need your glue stick i've got one here so i'm just going to take the lid off and what I'm going to do is I am going to turn over the mummy sloth's head and I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the back of her head there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick it on like that. Okay, so you can see that it's sticking out a little bit. And if I turn over, you can maybe see that there's a little bit extra there okay and so that's our mummy sloth that's the first stage so we need to add her legs now don't we so i'm going to take one of the legs and i'm going to turn it over and just put a little bit of glue it doesn't need to be a lot of glue okay and we're going to put it actually on the bottom there as well and we're going to pop it behind so you can see i've put it behind so i'm not putting it on the front so you can't see that black line that's the idea so we're going to put it behind like that okay so if i lay her down you can see and then the same thing with the front leg so we're going to put a little bit of glue just at the bottom Ooh, there we go and this time it's going to go here so can you see i'm putting it behind and i'm just going to stick it down and what we're trying to do is we're trying to get all the legs to be the similar kind of length Okay, like so yeah now you're thinking well where does the baby go where does he go where does he fit well he's gonna go just here on her tummy because that's how sloths carry their babies so what we're gonna do is we're going to put a little bit of glue just at the bottom of his tummy area here on the front because again he's gonna go behind the mummy sloth so it looks like he's sitting with her so I'm gonna lift her up and I'm going to pop him in there like that. Okay, so can you see what we've created now? So we've got the mummy sloth looking out into the rainforest. She's keeping an eye out into the forest. We've got our little baby who's tucked in neatly. He's just in on her tummy. And we've got our two legs added in as well. And they look like they're behind because of this black line here and this black line here. Okay, so we have managed to make our little sloth template which is going to help us with the next stage because what we're going to do now is we're going to try and make our sloth hang off a nice branch in the rainforest okay and so what we're going to do is we're going to use our template to help us to do that so i'm going to position my template and i want him or her sorry roughly in the middle okay of our piece of paper and i've just got a4 printer paper that's all i'm using today i'm not using anything complicated i'm not using watercolor paper just the a4 paper that you would get in your normal computer printer because i thought mums and dads or whoever's at home with you might have some of those um bits of paper actually in their office or in their printer that you use for your homework and things so what we're going to do is we're just going to lay it down we're not going to stick yet 
okay that's the important bit we're not going to stick yet we're going to look at where we're going to put our sloth and we're going to use this to help us okay so i'm just pushing down so i can see where the top of her legs are and i'm going to do a little line at the top of her leg there and the top of her leg there okay and if i move it down you might be able to see that Ooh. okay so you can see that i've got two little dots in the position where her legs will go okay and i'm going to put another one just at the bottom there okay and then i can take that away and i can see that i've got a dot here a dot here and a dot here and that will help us to make sure that we've got the sloth in the right position so we're going to use these two little dots to help us here and i'm going to draw a line going all the way through and it's kind of a wiggly line and it's going to go kind of right across your whole page and then i'm going to put in another line that just follows that one not exactly there's some little bumps and some little wiggles in there because this is going to be our branch and it doesn't need to be perfect because obviously in real life the branches do have wiggles and they do have bends and they do have bumps and that's what we're trying to create so once we've got our branch in place we know kind of where we're going to put everything and that helps us to move on with our design for our background so at this point what i think i'm going to get you to do is i'm going to get you to stick your sloth down okay so you need to just be very very careful okay put some glue gently on the back try not to rip her legs off because we don't want a legless sloth that would be not very good wouldn't it so we can put a little bit more on and so on just gently and put a little bit on the back of the baby sloth as well because we want him to be well stuck down okay so just be careful when you're doing that and then what we're going to do we're going to use those dots there and there to help us to position our little sloth like so and we're just going to smooth down our template just like that okay just press down ever slightly it doesn't matter where this dot is it was just to help us and you can see how the baby kind of just touches the branch which is how it should look if yours is a little thicker it doesn't matter it will work either way okay so our glue is done with now so you can pop that back away wherever you got it from pop the lid on make sure it's on nice and tight so it doesn't dry out so our sloth is looking very cute in the rainforest but we need to put in some extra details and some of you might have seen the other rainforest video that I did earlier in the week and if you've seen that one you might have an idea of what might be coming next but we're not going to do it quite the same because we want to make this one a little bit more like a frame rather than the plants necessarily going all the way across okay so we're going to start with the outside edges and then we're going to come in slightly to the middle and then we're going to color in the background from there so I'm going to put in and I'm going to make them nice and big okay so you want to think about trying to make these leaves lovely and large we don't want them to be too small because we want them to be able to be seen okay so I'm just putting in some nice big leaf shapes here and it doesn't matter if they go off the page that's actually quite quite nice okay so we're not worrying too much I might be able to fit in a little flower here later on okay and I'm going to put another leaf coming out like that so it's going at a different angle and then I'm going to use the corner for a flower so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put a little semicircle going across and then you can use your imagination at this point you can choose how you want your flowers to look so I'm going to do some nice simple petals and it doesn't matter again if they go off the edge because we're just trying to fill our paper okay so we've done some simple leaf shapes on this side and we're going to do the same on the other side but we might try some different shaped leaves if you think you can so I'm going to do a spiky one on this side so I'm going to draw a nice curved line and then another one and that's going to be the stem and at the end of the stem I'm going to draw a little leaf shape like that okay and then I'm going to do some little spiky leaves on our stem and 
The reason we're doing different kinds of leaves is because in the rainforest there are lots and lots of different plants and that's what the sloth likes to eat. They like to eat lots of different leaves and lots of different uh, flowers and petals and things like that. So I'm just going to add in some spiky leaves on that side and I'm going to do another one and it's going to come down a little bit. So you can see how my stem isn't straight, it's curving really nicely. And I'm just going to go in again, just so I've got two. So that makes our stem broader. And again, just like I did with that leaf before, I'm going to put a little leaf shape on the end so that it's not going out into just space. And then I'm going to put those spiky patterns all the way down the side of the leaf. There we go. I might get one more in like that. Okay, and don't worry about it being too symmetrical or having the same number on each side. That's not terribly important. We just want to get some nice, interesting leaf shapes in our picture. Okay, so we've got two lovely spiky ones over there, which are really nice, actually. I like those ones. I think they're maybe my favourites. So I might put in another flower over here. I'm going to put in a semicircle, so it's going off the page. But this time I'm going to do pointy petals and I'm making them nice and big so they're coming out into our rainforest picture like so and I might fit another one in there okay so we've got a lovely big flower at the edge here and if you want to you can make your petal a little bit longer so I'm going to use my rubber there just to rub that out because we don't always get things right first time and editing is a really important part of being an artist isn't it so once we've got a few leaves in on either side, then we're going to think about putting something down in the foreground as well. OK, so that's going to be our front. While I'm thinking about it, I'm going to put in some little veins on these leaves here. And the veins are what take the water and the, the plants food all the way around the leaves. So I'm just going to put them in just like so. And that will make our leaves look nice and real when we come to colour them in a minute and it's looking good so far I'm really liking the, the little mummy and baby in the middle here she's looking lovely okay so you can edit as you go I'm then going to do the foreground here now I think that I might put in a heart shaped leaf here and I'm going to go and it's going to be an upside down heart shape but if you want to turn your paper around so you can do a heart shape the other way than you can and I'm going to add a little stem on like that and then I'm going to put some little holes in the edge like that because some of the leaves in the rainforest have those kind of holes and they don't need to be um, exactly the same but they can just be natural around the edge and I'm going to put another one of those in there because what we want to do is we want to create lots of different patterns and lots of different leaves if we can okay so I'm going to put in some more little holes and we'll color those in the background color in a minute and I'm going to add a little stem on at the bottom so hopefully you can see how nice those two look I might then add another section of leaves here now I might decide that I'm going to do long spiky leaves coming out this way you can use your imagination or if you want to if you want to really get into this project and do it kind of naturalistically you could always have a little look online and you could check out some of the kind of plants that might be in the rainforest so I'm going to do this kind of leaf down at the bottom to fill that space and you can see how we're trying to get lots of leaves in now this little space to me looks a little bit small so I'm going to add in another leaf just like that. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to fill all of the edges. So we're really framing our sloth in the middle. So this last bit here is a little bit bare, isn't it? So what could we add in there? I'm thinking that I might put in a vine going across. So I'm going to draw a wiggly line and another wiggly line. And that is like the vines that creep around the trees in the rainforest. And we're going to add some leaves to either side of this. And again, you don't need to worry too much about them being symmetrical. 
you can just have a go because in nature they're not always perfectly symmetrical they usually have the same number of leaves on either side but they don't always come from the same part of the plant so you can be a little bit free with your design here and you can use your imagination you can put in whatever kind of plants or leaves you want to do okay so you can think about the shapes that you might use and what kind of colors you're going to add in at the end okay and so i'm going to finish this area by putting in some of those lovely big leaf shapes from this side that we did before because they're nice and simple but we want there to be a mixture like i said of different shapes of leaf okay and i'm going to add in the little veins like that so you can see and i might get another small one just in there at the edge okay and you can just be careful as you go and so you're trying to fill the space and so now our sloth is right in the middle and she looks really kind of cool hanging out there doesn't she so our last section is this top bit here and this is actually quite easy we're not going to make this too complicated we're just going to put in some simple leaf shapes going along the top and they can come from whichever angle you want them to okay so they can point in whatever direction you think looks good okay and we're just going to do them in little groups we're not going to do them all the way along because that would make it too regimented it would make it too all of the same which we don't want so we're just going to put in them coming and you can see some of them point this way some of them point downwards some of them point the other way okay so you can think about how your leaves might want to point and i'm going to finish by doing one in the corner and what you might see is on this section and this section i have got that line going through from where the branch was and i don't want to see that because i want the leaf to be coming in front of the branch so if you've got any lines coming through your leaves you can just use your rubber to rub those out but actually we've done quite well we haven't I haven't taken any of the other ones far enough in but that one at the corner I needed it to be a little bit bigger so can you see now how we've made like a rainforesty jungly frame for our sloth and that's what we were after and I'm gonna put in just in this little space here I'm gonna put in a little small flower not too big just to fill in that little gap and you could maybe if you wanted to extend that out and that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a little extra one in here like that. And that's what I mean. You can just decide as you're going along how you want this to look because it's your design at the end of the day. OK, so we have got our background all drawn in. So we've got leaves going along the top. Nice, simple leaf shapes. We're not trying to make those too complicated. We've got some simple leaf shapes, but they're quite big on the outside. We've got some of these upside down heart ones but as i say you can turn the paper around so it's easier to draw we've got a nice big flower over here we've got a vine creeping across and then we've got these fantastic spiky leaves on this side too and i think that our uh, background now looks really good it looks really exciting okay so what we're going to do is we are going to start to color this um so what you're going to need is you're going to need a light green and a dark green for this and that's the first bit and then you're going to need a dark blue and a light blue and that's going to be our sky background so you need those four colors so hopefully while you're getting those sorted i can get myself sorted as well and we'll come back and we'll start getting on with the coloring so we're going to use our light green to color in our leaves and we're going to do all of that leaf first and I might even do this one next as well and I'm trying my best to color quite quickly but you can take your time okay and we're trying again to make sure that we get rid of all the white areas on our leaf shapes okay so I've done two I'm gonna now use my dark green and this is where we make our leaves realistic so I'm going to put dark green all the way around the edge just like we did with the sloths mum 
with her legs it's the same kind of thing so I'm going to just colour in with my dark green and I'm going to go over this pencil line here with my dark green okay all the way around the outside and I'm going to do the same with this next leaf and I can press hard or I can press soft and if you press harder the colour will be more uh, vibrant and strong and if you press a little bit lighter it won't be quite as visible so you want to press hard in some places and not so hard in others and that will give your leaves a nice realistic feel and then you can put in some little areas of dark green as well that will help your leaves to look like they're real in the rainforest so I'm going to leave those two and I'm going to show you how to do this one next Okay, so I'm just going to put my dark green down and I'm going to get my light green again and I'm going to just colour the outside leaves in light green and these need to be lighter than the middle. Okay, we're going to use our dark green in a minute to make them look realistic and the reason that the outside leaves are lighter is because they are thinner. So the more light will come through those leaves than the stem because the stem is thicker. Okay, so we're going to now go back in with our dark green and we're going to colour the stem. And again, just a little bit of dark green just coming onto your leaves because the bit at the bottom of the leaf is slightly thicker so that it doesn't just flop over. So we want to show that by just putting a little bit of dark green coming out onto the leaf from the stem okay and you can see how that just gives your leaves just a little bit extra realisticness okay and we're going to go in the same here okay so I'm going to use my dark green for the stem and the light green for the leaves and I'm thinking carefully about my colours and I'm trying not to leave any white and I'm trying my best to stay in the lines okay because we're going to add a background in a minute and I'm going to show you how to do that with the light blue and the dark blue okay so last little bit on this on the leaf those little bits of extra green just at the bottom now if you've got more shades of green than I have I've only got two in my pencil cassette but you might have three so if you've got three you could always put another little shade in okay so that you can make your leaves look even more different and unique because that's the part that we are looking for in the rainforest we want them all to be unique we want them all to be different okay so I'm not going to go any further with the leaf colouring at the moment because what I'm going to do is I'm going to colour the whole thing so that you can see it and I'll speed that process up so you can see the, all of the colours added in so what you're going to do next is I'm going to show you how to do the background okay so that you know what you're doing and what I've done to help you to work out how to do it in a really good way so we're going to use our blues our two shades so a dark blue and a light blue now if you've only got one shade of blue so you've got this one that's absolutely fine it doesn't matter if you've only got one blue in fact if you don't want to use two shades you don't have to okay um if you've just got this shade of blue it's fine it doesn't matter okay because our skies and the rainforest can be different colors and we're trying to make our slots kind of be on the edge of the rainforest so maybe they're coming out to have a little drink at their um, the stream and so we're going to be able to use our blues to create like a sky background and using the pencil crayons is really easy but if you haven't got um, pencil crayons you can do this whole thing with felt tips if you want okay now if you want to do your sky in felt tip a blue felt tip feel free to do that as well I don't mind I haven't got any felt tips with me at the moment so that's why I'm using pencil crayon but you could do that quite easily if you wanted to you could have a felt tip sky okay so you just choose what you think you're best with because sometimes the felt tips can smudge 
uh, the pencil crayons, you know, you've got to keep sharpening them and things like that. Okay, so you choose and decide what you want to do. So I'm going to use my light blue first and then I'm going to use my dark blue. So I'm going to put the dark blue to one side and I'm only going to show you on this section here. Okay, I'm not going to do the whole lot because you'll be able to see how that's going to work in a minute once I've coloured mine in. So using my light blue, I am just going to colour in between my leaves. Now you can see that I am not necessarily being that careful and the reason for that is because it doesn't matter if you go a little bit onto the leaves it's not going to matter because it's a darker shade so I'm just being careful when I'm going in between but then I'm able to colour quite quickly but what you will notice is you'll notice that I am not leaving any white bits and that's the key to making this look really effective okay so we're going to go all the way along and keep trying to not leave any white bits now if you find that you think using felt tip pens might help you with that then that's fine you can do that okay so you can see that we're building up that nice blue background and I'm not going to do the whole thing because I'm going to as I say I'm going to do it and speed up the video so you can see me colouring so you can follow along but it won't take all of the time okay so hopefully you'll be able to understand that and watch along okay so that's what we're going to do with our sky and I'm not going to finish this bit okay I'm just going to leave it for now so you might have been wondering what we were going to do with the dark blue okay so the dark blue if you want to you don't have to but if you want to you could put a little bit of dark blue just in between your leaves here okay and that creates like a little bit of shadow behind your leaves but if you don't want to do that and you just want to do one color of blue because you've taken ages over your drawing then that's absolutely fine okay so the last thing I'll show you just before I move on to speeding up the video I'm going to move those out of the way the background's going to be nice and simple okay the flowers you can choose whatever you want but the branch what we're going to do is we're going to color from side to side okay just lightly just from side to side and the white reason we're doing it from side to side is so that the it looks like the bark is running that way along the branch okay and just be careful of it Paul we don't want to ruin that and then once we've got our branch colored in we're going to go hard along the outside edge so I'm pressing really firmly to create a nice edge for our branch Okay, and I'm going to go lightly in the middle. Okay, so a bit like we did with the sloth's leg. Okay, and then if you want to, you could put in some little wiggly lines in there to show that it's bark and it's a bit rough. Okay, so if you want to do that, you can. Okay, so you can add those in and it looks like it's a real tree. Okay. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to colour and I'm going to speed up the video so you can see it. And then we'll come back at the end and you can see how this all works. So what you might want to think about is using lots of bright colours for your flowers. OK, so anything you've drawn as a leaf, we want to keep a leaf colour. So we want them to be green and dark green. OK, we don't want brightly coloured red leaves and things like that, because in the rainforest, it's very green. So we want the majority of our picture to be green. But these extra details, like the little flowers here and then the corners and round the edges, you can colour however you like. So whatever you fancy will go. So if you want to do a purple flower, you can. If you want to do a pink one, an orange one, a red one, you can do whatever you like. Okay? but you just need to remember to try and think about the colors that work together so you might have a pink center and some yellow petals or a yellow center and some red petals you can choose however you want your um, flowers to be okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that now and then hopefully you'll be able to come back and see my finished sloth and hopefully you've managed to get as far as I have and we're going to get going with the next section.
So as you can see, I have finished my colouring and I'm really pleased with how my final design looks. So I've used my different shades of green on my leaves to make them look really realistic. I've used the dark and the light brown kind of on the branch to make it look again like it's really a tree. You can see that my beautiful sky background is all different kind of shades of blue where the pencil overlaps and it looks really nice. The flower colours that I've chosen work really well, I think. I've got some orange ones on the side and I've got a lovely three-tone flower at the bottom. So I've used orange, pink and then red, which you could do if you wanted to. And then I've got this beautiful pink one over at the side. And right in the centre, looking very cute, I think, is the mummy and the baby sloth. And they are obviously having fun hanging out in the rainforest. So I hope that you've been able to follow along with the video today and that you have been able to create your own really special rainforest sloth using the template to help you. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the remainder of the template. You'll remember that at the, um, the bottom of the template was kind of a little head of a sloth and a leaf shape. So what we're going to do is we're going to make that one really quickly as well so that you have two fantastic pieces of sloth, sloth craft for your walls and your bedrooms. Okay, so what I'll do is I'm going to stop the video now and then I'm going to get my things that I'm going to need for my next video. So what you're going to need is a green felt tip or two if you can, a, a dark green and a light green and a brown felt tip. And this one is quite quick. It doesn't take too long, but I thought you might enjoy it. So I'll see you in a minute. Well done. I think they look brilliant. Okay, so you have got your second half of your template. So you remember that we cut it in half along the dotted line, and mine wasn't perfect. It was a little bit skew with, but that's okay, it doesn't matter. And we have got two leaf shapes, which you're going to need, and your little sloth head here. So what we're going to use for this is we're going to use a, ooh, <laughs> a light green and a dark green, if you've got them. Okay, if you haven't, don't worry, but I think most pens, pen packets come with a, black, a light and a dark, and you're going to need a brown one for the sloth. And if you have got your Sharpie from before or your black felt tip from before, you can use that for his eyes. Okay, so hopefully you've got all of those ready and we can get started. So I'm going to start with my light green, and we don't need to be neat with this because we're going to cut it out okay so all we're going to do is we're going to color our leaf shape completely light green we're not going to put anything else on there okay so we're going to do all of this light green just like that if it if you go out the lines it doesn't matter okay because we're going to cut the leaves out so if you go over the line at the edge it doesn't matter okay just be careful you don't get green on your sloth although some of them do have algae so it wouldn't be the end of the world right using your dark green this leaf is going to be the back leaf and this leaf is going to be the front leaf which will become clear in a minute okay so this one's going to be quite straightforward so we're just going to draw a wiggly line all the way up nearly to the top but it's going to stop just before okay so just before the top it's going to stop and then we're going to put in some little veins coming out from either side and it doesn't matter if they're not equal okay and I think you can extend them right to the edge okay so it looks like they're going all the way out to the side and if you want to add a little extra one in there I'm going to just like that and I might put an extra one in there so you're just trying to fill the space okay so you can you can see what I've done there so this is going to be the back leaf right this is going to be the front leaf so this is up to you I didn't put it on here because I felt like some of you might like to put it on others might not want to put it on okay so this bit is totally up to you if you want to add this bit you can if you don't want to add this bit you just copy this exactly the same on this leaf here okay but I thought it might be quite nice and some of you might like okay to put a little flower on so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw right at the bottom in this corner and you'll see why that becomes important in a minute and I'm just drawing 
using my black felt tip or my sharpie and I've got printer paper down below there so I'm not going to make a mess on the table. Now you might have some pens, some felt tip pens of different colours and if you have you could use those. If you haven't you could always use the pencil crayons that um, we used earlier okay so I've got a little yellow felt tip pen there but I haven't got anything else so I'm going to do my outside petals using pencil crayon okay so if you want to add this little bit you can but if you don't want to that's absolutely fine you don't have to okay so then what we're going to do is if you've drawn the flower you're just going to go carefully around the edge with the light green okay and that's just so you don't get it smudged when you're colouring in and then you're basically going to do exactly what you did with the other leaf which is you're going to colour all of it in light green and we're going to try not to leave any white if you can because it always looks better if you can make sure that you've got a solid bank of colour there okay and like I said, if you go out the lines at the towards the end, it's fine. It doesn't matter. We're going to do the same again. So with your dark green pen, you're going to go up the middle and it's just going to stop just before the top. And then we're going to add those lines in. And we might just take them all the way right to the edge this time. Okay, straight away. Because I think once you've done one, then you know what you're doing for the next time. Okay, and I'm going to put a couple more in just as I get to the bottom here. Maybe just one more in there like that. And I'm going to do one just creeping under the flower and one on that side there so we don't forget that little area. Okay, so we have got our two leaves made. So this was going to be the back and this one's going to be the front, which will become clear in a minute. Next, we're going to do our sloth. And it's exactly like we did with the mum and the baby, except this time because we're using felt tip, we don't need to worry about pressing hard or light. So we're going to colour carefully around the eye. Now, if you go into the eye it's not the end of the world because obviously it's going to be black but try your very best to keep it clear okay and we're going to go all the way we're not thinking about any different colors we're just going to go all the way around the outside and again if you go out of the lines it's not the end of the world I'm trying to stay quite neat and be careful because obviously I don't want to get the brown on his face so he's done come back in with your black this time okay so you've either got a black sharpie or a black felt tip and we're going to do the same again we're going to try and leave a little white area in his eye if we can but if we can't don't worry and I'm going to do his little nose black okay so all our pieces are now colored okay and what we're going to do is we're going to assemble our sloth so we're going to need our scissors again okay and hopefully like i said before you've got some nice rounded edge ones that are safe for you to use or you feel comfortable using if not this is the point where you might ask a grown-up to help you whoever's there with you okay and what we're going to do is we're going to cut out our leaf shapes first okay because we've got to do one more job with them before we stick them together okay so we're going to try and get them as neat as we can okay but you can always ask a grown-up for a little bit of help if you need to okay around the outside of this one and I quite like it with a little flower on but it that's totally up to you you definitely don't have to do that if you don't want to it'll still look really nice with or without it okay so that is that one cut out okay and I'm just gonna move my spare paper to one side and you might like to do that too just so you can keep all your pieces that you need together I'm gonna just cut out my sloth as well so that we can use him or her in a minute and I suppose if you wanted to add a little bow onto the sloth, top of the sloths head you could if you wanted to okay because he's cute he's a little bit more cartoon like or she is a little bit more cartoon like than the one that we worked on originally okay so there's our little sloth baby head and what we're going to do is we're going to make a little sloth pouch for our little sloth to sit in and that doesn't sound well you're probably wondering how it's going to work so you have another choice at this point so if you want your little sloth pouch to be able to be seen from the back and the front you need to color the back of both of these okay so I'm going to do that just to show you 
So exactly the same, but we're not going to worry. And I've got paper down, okay? So you might want to do that as well, okay? So that you can just colour, and it's not too tricky to do, and you're not worrying about getting felt pen on your desk or your book that you're using underneath to rest on. So you're going to colour the whole lot light green, okay, like so all the way to the edge of the leaf and just move it so you can see to make sure you've got all the bits covered and you can actually see the leaf veins on here so i wouldn't do that again unless you want to if you want to you can okay so that's one leaf done now the second leaf you don't need to do as much so this one's going to be the front and i've i've drawn a little flower on to help me to remember when i'm actually doing the video for you but if you haven't got a flower on it doesn't matter you can just color the whole side if you want so i'm going to turn it over and not all of this is going to be seen now that sounds strange at the moment but once we assemble it we'll be able to see exactly what i mean so i'm going to color most of the way down the leaf but i'm not going to bother doing the bottom bit okay and that will become clear in a minute and as you can see i'm just going onto the paper so it's handy to have something to color on because that means you can do it quite quickly so i've left the bottom blank okay and you'll see why in a minute so we've got leaf veins on the front and then just solid color on the back and solid color but only halfway on the back of that one okay so we're going to turn the leaf over and what we're going to do is the leaves should fit quite closely together like so so hopefully you've done a good job with your cutting and i think you might be able to see what we're going to do okay so on the front leaf you might want to add in oh, my green pen's rolling into shot there you might want to put in your veins on this one if you want to you can Okay, and just copy the ones that you did on the other side. Okay, because you can see them through, or I can. So hopefully you'll be able to. And if you can't see them, just do some new ones. Okay, yeah. So what we're going to do then is we're going to use our Pruitt stick that we had before. We're going to unfurl it. And we're going to glue about halfway up. Okay, so we're just going to put it on the bottom, the big area at the bottom not all the way up okay I haven't glued any further than halfway and I'm going to glue the two leaves together and I'm going to press them down now they might not meet exactly but that doesn't matter because what we're going to do next is we're going to put our sloth inside the little leaf pouch okay so if you want it to fit perfectly you can just trim that edge off if you want okay but it doesn't matter so then we're going to fold down the top leaf and can you see how it's almost forming a little pouch and that's where our little sloth's going to go so we're going to fold it but we're not going to press really hard on that fold we're just going to turn it down get our little sloth we're going to put some glue on the back okay and we are going to slip into his little leaf bed and we're just going to press him down really gently okay so you can see that if you flip it up it almost hides the baby sloth and then if you roll it down again there he is and it's not supposed to hide him completely because obviously we want him to still know that he's there so you can see it's a really nice little craft that one it's nice and easy, didn't take too long, and I thought you might like to have a little go at that one as well. So, you've done two sloth crafts this time, which is brilliant. So I hope you've had a go at the rainforest sloth earlier on, and I'm hoping that you also managed to find this little sloth a little sneaky extra project in at the end. So I've had a really nice time working with you today and I hope you've had a fun time working along with me at home because we've got a little bit more time on our hands at the moment and it's always nice to be creative and to be using your imagination to be colouring and doing things. So hopefully you'll have been able to find the, find the templates and follow along with me for this video and I hope that I will see you next time and I'm going to try and post two videos 
a week so that we can keep being creative because I think it's really important. Okay, well, thank you so much for watching. And hopefully you might, if you've enjoyed these videos, you might share them with your friends and tell them about them as well because anyone can use these videos. So that's the idea that you can pass on the creativity, which is a really good thing to do. Okay, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time. Well done. Thank you.